Apple has been quietly stirring the pot in the world of AI in the most Apple way possible. And their master plan revolves around something that they call the neural engine, a mysterious piece of tech that lives in every single device that they sell today. But what is the neural engine and how could it possibly give Apple the upper hand in the long-term AI race? Well, buckle up because in this video, we're going on a journey into the heart of Apple's secret AI strategy from their dedicated AI chips, their neural engine, there are stealthy AI acquisitions and more. Apple has been very secretive. However, they have been ramping up their efforts in recent years. Their biggest public step into AI has been the development of the neural engine, part of their in-house designed ARM based processors called Apple Silicon. These chips power all of Apple's latest devices and are a huge part of Apple's long-term AI strategy. The neural engine, which is a part of the Apple Silicon chip, is a dedicated set of circuits designed specifically for performing the types of calculations common in machine learning and AI applications. This means it can perform these tasks more quickly and efficiently than general purpose CPUs. It is what powers features like Face ID, Siri, and on-device processing for applications that need machine learning. If you have ever used the background removal tool on photos on your iPhone and now in Final Cut Pro, or the predictive text in any messaging app on the Mac, or even Siri in its now seemingly limited capacity, then you have used Apple's AI on device. All these AI tools currently feel so far behind what is available from other companies. But let's remember ChatGPT2 compared to three and now four, or even the first iteration of Midjourney and Stable Diffusion to where they all sit now. Apple moves slower, but when they do, they do it by leaps. So it's not that it's falling behind, it's just they haven't pushed out their latest tech. But Apple is patient, and their advantage by having their neural engines on device is twofold. First, by doing these calculations on the device itself, Apple can ensure a high level of privacy for its users. And this is a stark contrast to many other companies, which perform these calculations in the cloud, leading to potential privacy concerns. Secondly, by integrating neural engines directly into their chips, Apple can optimize its performance and power consumption in a way that simply is not possible for companies relying on third-party chips. It has proven such a power move with their SOCs or system on a chip that Google has followed suit and started making their own chips for the same reason, to have AI on the device. This is huge for privacy, speed, and for federated learning a method of machine learning where the model learns from decentralized data across numerous devices while maintaining user privacy. This allows Apple to continuously improve their AI models with real world data without ever actually seeing the data. It's potentially a bit slower than the other training methods, but Apple is playing the long game as always. And as a clear sign of how important AI is to Apple, Apple has quietly and strategically been acquiring the most amount of AI startups and hiring the top AI researchers over the last few years, showing a significant investment in the technology. For example, their acquisition of Exnor is especially interesting. Exnor's technology is focused on efficient AI, which fits perfectly with Apple's focus on on-demand processing. Apple also previously acquired Spectral, a Danish computer vision startup for augmented reality technology. And that is where the separate objects from the background tool came from. Apple's video codecs are another example of how their AI is being used to enhance image and video quality on the iPhone, which continues to push the boundaries of what's possible on mobile devices and for their delivery codecs for Apple TV+. Apple's biggest strength and potential in AI might be their ecosystem. With millions of devices in use around the world, Apple has an unprecedented platform for deploying AI technology. Thought of another way, they are building a gigantic machine learning platform with every device that they sell. Similar to how Tesla uses their customers' cars to continually train their AI models to solve full self-driving. So the big question that comes out of all this is, what is Apple training its AI for? The ultimate virtual assistant? Is that why Siri's progress feels stagnant over the last few years? Because they don't want it to be good, they want it to be great. So what does this mean for you and for me? It means that privacy concerns may be minimized. It means that when Apple does push out the next gen Siri, it will feel more like a virtual assistant. It's just taken longer to get there. But because they have the miles with all the devices, it actually may come out stronger than what is available currently on other platforms. Apple's AI plans may not be publicly flashy as some others, 
but they're quietly building an impressive AI infrastructure right under our noses on our devices. This will lead to more powerful, efficient, and private AI capabilities for users. And it positions Apple to remain a major player in the AI space for many years to come. And this year is turning out to be the year of AI. And it's a field that's rapidly changing and evolving, and it's really exciting. And it's up to Apple to show its hand on what they are doing next. But based on the recent not so secret investments and developments, it's clear that AI is a huge part of their strategy moving forward. As for right now, there are still trust and safety issues around these generative AI models. And I strongly doubt that Apple will expose its customers to any technology that comes with trust and safety risks. But that hasn't stopped companies like Adobe from making huge strides with AI. And in this video, I go over Photoshop's new generative fill and AI capabilities. Also, I live stream on my second channel where I deep dive on the creative process as well as freelance financials. So make sure you check that out. As always, thanks for watching. Ooh.